Welcome back to another video on ESP-IDF. Today we will be creating simple DC analog signal using the digital to analog converter or DAC of the ESP32. If you are switching from the Arduino, then this feature should be new for you as the common Arduino. Uno doesn't have DAC. As I've made a video covering ADC, and if you have watched it, the concept of DAC should be obvious to you as it simply is the inverse of ADC. DAC converts digital values and then outputs the voltage level corresponding to this digital value. The resolution of a DAC indicates the number of possible output voltage levels. For the ESP32, it has two 8-bit DAC channels located in GPIO 25, channel 0, and GPIO 26, channel 1. But the ESP32 S2, they are pin 17 and 18, respectively. This means that at the same time, you can generate two analog signals out of these pins, and it can output the voltage within the range of 0 to 3.3 volts, based on the input digital value varying from 0 to 255. If you have seen my video on PWM with LEDC, you may question how DAC compared to PWM if they can both output analog values. Let's say we want to get 1.6 volts out of ESP32. If we use PWM, then it is switching between 0 and 3.3 volts repeatedly, where 3.3 takes 50% of the cycle. DAC should output 1.6 volts directly. If you have noticed, then PWM requires its timer to count extremely fast. For example, to perform 16-bit PWM, the timer needs to count up to 2 to the power of 16 in an extremely short amount of time. DAC doesn't have this limitation, and it is the faster and more precise option. This makes it suitable for audio, video applications, signal generation, industrial control systems, or sensor systems compared to PWM. Coming back to the topic of using ESP32's DAC. In ESP-IDF 5.4, which is the current stable version, there are three modes of using DAC. Direct voltage output or one-shot mode. This is pretty self-explanatory. Note that you can output even in ISR or interrupt handler. Continuous mode where ESP32 outputs analog values using DMA or direct memory access cosine wave to generate cosine wave. Of course, you can configure the frequency amplitude or phase. This video only illustrates the basics of DAC, so I will not delve into the continuous mode which is normally used for data transmission. If you are going to do audio-related project, my recommendation is that you should also take a look I2S or Inter-IC Sound peripheral of the ESP32. For transmitting audio data, you can use synchronous writing, which loads all of the data into a DMA buffer before transmitting them, or asynchronous writing, which transmits data asynchronously based on event callback. If you are going to build a wave generator, then use the cyclical writing mode, which converts data in the DMA buffer repeatedly. The API of DAC follows the same pattern as ADC, but is a bit more simple. You have a handle and create a new channel for it with a specified config. You can start operating on the channel afterwards and don't forget to delete the channel after using it. This is pretty straightforward for the one-shot mode. But for cosine mode, you have to specify more parameters in the configuration, such as frequency, a minimum of 130 hertz and should not be more than 200 kilohertz, clock source, attenuation of the wave amplitude and phase. Our simple demo project will only require a one kilom resistor and an LED wired to pin 25 or channel zero and ground. The LED serves as a visualization of the electrical signal but I will also use a cheap portable oscilloscope to inspect the waveform. This project is only meant for illustration, so you don't have to replicate this. From my experience, you won't get the desired output when two channels are in two separate modes, what I initially did, or running two channels in the continuous mode at the same time. This is why I will build a task to run the one-shot mode first, then terminate it and switch to the cosine mode task.
In the one-shot mode, I gradually increase the output before decreasing it, and the result should be a triangular waveform. In fact, you can combine the one-shot mode and timer interrupt to create other complex waveforms like square waves or sine waves without even touching the continuous mode I earlier introduced. You should have seen me using the free RTOS task functions in earlier videos. Once the ESP32 start running, cosine wave generator is suspended by default and then only resumes after the one-shot output task is deleted. Once done, let's test the result with an oscilloscope. For a while, you will see the LED getting brighter until it reaches its peak and slowly dimmer to no light. Right now, we are getting a triangular waveform. After a while, it will become bright at a moderate level. And we know that the waveform is actually a cosine wave. Adjust the oscilloscope a little bit and we can see it better. Note that I use the probe on both the resistor and the LED. Uh, if you try to use it with the LED alone, the waveform will look distorted as you have to account for the voltage drop across the resistor. And that's it for this video. Due to my tight schedule, I can't release videos too often, but be assured that I don't intend to end this series yet. Thanks for watching and hope you can support me by subscribing to this channel and liking my videos, or give me a small donation with the info in the description.